took to Tahrir Square, when you took to the streets, you inspired the whole world. You inspired the people of Madrid, Spain, who went to the square, Plaza de Sol. You inspired the people of Chile, the students of Chile. You inspired people in Montreal. You inspired people in London. And yes, you inspired people in the United States as well. Because when we saw you, because when we saw you in the streets confronting dictatorship, confronting oppression and power, we found the strength in us to confront power in our own country. And there is one particular street that has a lot of power. Maybe you have heard of it, it's called Wall Street. Have you heard of Wall Street? Just raise your hand. Okay. So we decided that we were going to occupy Wall Street. We were going to take our bodies and our voices to Wall Street and tell the world that enough is enough. And so we occupy Wall Street. One more time. Oh. <laughs> we took our bodies and our voices to the very center of the financial world. And we did it for one reason. And it is called economic justice. Economic justice means that just because you have more money than me does not mean that you should have more control over my life, over the government of my democratic country, because you have more money. And when we guess, because in a democracy, everybody gets one vote, and everybody's voice matters. But unfortunately, in my country, and in many countries of the world, it is not votes that matter anymore, but dollars. And that's wrong. That's very wrong. And when we went to Wall Street, because this is about voice, right? This whole conference, TEDx Ben Ha, is about positive voice. So when we went to Wall Street, we united our voices and we said this. We are the 99%. And I'm going to say it in Arabic. I wrote it on my hand here. Okay.
supposedly a democracy. There are 400 people, just 400 people, that's not that much more than the people in this room, that control more wealth, more money, than the rest of the entire country. Over 300 million people in the country. And just 400 people control more wealth. And of those people, even a small number, just maybe four families of those people, control almost all of that wealth. So the money is so, is so consolidated. And with it, they have begun to control our government. They've, con they've begun to control our economy and the way that we live in ways that are hurting not just my country, but they're hurting the entire world. And so we went to Occupy Wall Street. And when we did, we found inspiration from Tabir, from Plaza de Sol, from brave people all over the world that are willing to use their voices to peacefully, but forcefully, demand change, demand an answer from the people that are supposed to represent them. In Spain, the young people saw you, Tabir, they saw you in the streets, and they went to the streets, and they camped out in the squares, and they said this in Spanish. They said, Si no nos dejáis soñar, no os dejaremos dormir. This is Spanish for, if you don't let us dream, we won't let you sleep. Do you understand? And so we are trying to rebuild our democracy that is broken. And we're trying to rebuild it one person at a time. Telling you, you have a voice. You can do something about the problems in your world. You can do something, but you have to organize together. You have to work together. And like Martin Luther King Jr. said, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And so if we see people dying, if we see people hurt, if we see people homeless, that is a threat to everybody. It is a threat to the entire world when people are starving, when people are hungry, when people are without a home, and when people are dying. And so we woke up to this in September of 2011 when we went to Wall Street and we put up tents and we slept in the park and we made food for each other, and we built a world that we wanted to live in. In the middle of the beast, in the belly of the beast, we say in English, we built a world that was beautiful, where we shared and worked together and collaborated instead of fighting and competing with each other. We built this world, and for two months, we lived this world. Instead of uh, burning fuel, for, for uh, electricity, we got on bikes, and we rode bikes, and made electricity with them. And we used solar panels from the sun, the energy from the sun, and from the wind. There's so much energy that we have that we don't use, and yet we keep taking energy out of the ground. And it hurts people, it kills people to do that. And so people came together, and for two months they lived together and they took care of each other. And then at the end of two months, Wall Street wasn't very happy. Wall Street didn't like it anymore. And so Wall Street called the police, and the police came in and they beat us out. But it's okay. I mean, it was bad, and we were hurt. But it didn't kill the idea, because you cannot kill an idea whose time has come. You cannot kill an idea whose time has come. Because they didn't just occupy Wall Street. After that, they went and 
occupied Detroit and Chicago and LA and San Francisco and London and thousands of other places across the world were now occupied. But not occupied like, like my country occupies uh, Iraq or Afghanistan or Israel uh, occupies Palestine. We took the word occupy and we made it positive. We made it good for the world. Because to occupy your community, to occupy your town, to occupy your school, to occupy your mosque, your church, your synagogue, your whatever, is to demand better. Is to say that we are awake, that we are not asleep anymore, that you can't continue to cheat us and to take control of our lives, that we're taking it back. We're taking it back. And because of this, we grew our voice. We grew our voice together, a collective voice. And now what do we do? Now we have to build that better world that we want to see, the world that is possible. My country began a long time ago, but not that long. My country began because some rebellious people wanted to live free of a different tyranny. They wanted to live free, and they wanted to live in, in harmony with each other. And that meant three things to them. They established in the constitution of my country three important freedoms. The freedom of speech, that is to say, to speak. You can't, you can't kill people with words. The freedom of speech. The freedom of the press, the freedom of people to communicate with each other on the television, in the newspaper, on the radio. This is a very important freedom because it's how we communicate to each other and to the world. And the freedom of religion, the freedom to practice your own religion as long as you don't hurt other people. It is not the job of my government to tell people how they should be religious. That is a firmly held belief in my country. It's firmly, firmly held. It's very important. And so, with our Constitution, we built a democracy that has worked sometimes and has not worked other times. And my country is not perfect. I will be the first to tell you it's not and has done some horrific things to other countries. But we built a democracy and it has worked for some of the people in my country. And we're trying to make it work for all of the people, right? And we have to fix it. And I say this to you because this is a country that now has the opportunity to build a real democracy. So take a few lessons maybe from what works for us and what didn't work for us and doesn't work. And hopefully you can build it better than we have. Hopefully we can fix ours too. Democracy means you have to participate. You can't just watch. If you stand there, you have to participate. That doesn't just mean to vote and then go away. Okay, I vote for you, now you run the country. No, no. If you do that, they'll run the country into the ground. They'll run it not how you want. You have to vote, but you have to do more than just voting. Voting alone doesn't fix it. You have to stay active. And so, when we had a horrible disaster in our country just a few months ago, it was called Hurricane Sandy. It came and it destroyed many houses of people, rich people and poor people, but especially poor people, who don't have the same protections as rich people. It also destroyed the power, the electricity in New York City. This is a picture of New York City on the night of the hurricane. And the only light in Lower Manhattan is Wall Street, is Goldman Sachs, because they had their own power, their own generators. The 99%, the Tessa or Tessaim, we were out of power. We had no power. So what did we do? Occupy Sandy. Restoring power to the people. We went out and we helped our neighbors and we established centers, community centers, to help each other. Because this is what democracy looks like. 
Democracy is government of the people, by the people, for the people. So we don't need the 1% to have a democracy. We have each other, we have the people. 99% is a lot more than 1%. That's 99 times more people. We like to say that we outnumber the 1%. 99 to 1. So we help each other. We build a better world by helping each other. And by doing this, we set an example of what the world could look like. Because ultimately, we have to change the government. We have to make it better. We have to make it work for us. Not just for the rich, not just for the 1%, but for everybody. We have to make it work for everybody. And to do that, we have to all get involved. It's not enough to just vote. It's not enough to just uh, uh, to participate in a, a, a debate here or to participate in a club or an organization here. We have to continue to build together. That means international solidarity. Because the companies, the, the multinational corporations that are doing such horrible things around the world, they don't belong to one country. They're not American or Egyptian or uh, French or Italian or German. Those, are not, those com companies are not a, a country. Those companies are global. And so must we be global, the 99%, in order to grow the kind of power that will fix our world. So together, let's do it one more time. We are the 99%.